If you are a professional filmmaker or aspiring professional filmmaker, one thing is very clear. You should have some way of getting amazing soft light. However, figuring out how to get soft light isn't always the easiest way, but I found a piece of gear that in my opinion is the best way to obtain beautiful soft light. And we're gonna take a look at it right now. What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here. And first of all, if you're new to the channel, first of all, thank you so much for checking it out. If you are into filmmaking gear, tips, tutorials, all that good stuff, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because this is the perfect channel for you. But as I mentioned before, today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to get soft light. Now, this is actually a new light that I recently just picked up and that is the Aperture 120D. Now, I know there are tons of videos out there already on this light, but I wanted to put out my own video giving you guys my thoughts on this light and how I think it really makes such a big difference for indie filmmakers. Now, I know when I first got started, getting lighting wasn't the easiest thing, and primarily because lighting was so expensive. But as my business grew, I decided I wanted to start investing in better lights. But when it comes to picking high-end lights, the, the range is just so vast. So what I decided to start off with was trying to get the softest light at the best quality at the best price. And for me, this came down to basically just one light and that is the Aperture 120D. The Aperture 120D is an amazing LED light that actually has a Bowens mount on it, which allows you to attach tons of different types of accessories, accessories primarily left for photographers. But what Aperture has done is they've gone one step forward and not only allowed you to attach those accessories, but they've made the accessories as well. And so when you combine the 120D with their Aperture Light Dome, it makes for the softest light I've ever been able to produce. Now backing up really quick, when you actually get your Aperture 120D, it comes in this amazing case that, first of all, if you are like me and you're pretty much one man banding it most of the time, or you might have one or two assistants, being able to carry everything in a nice case definitely makes the process easier. And so them giving you this very well put together case that not only houses the light, but also houses your reflector, all of your cables, and actually has a room for a couple extra little accessories is a perfect addition for this light. Setting this thing up is actually super easy as well. It's just two cables into this box here, and then basically this box actually controls everything. Now, not only can you control it from the box itself by being able to turn the light on and off and being able to adjust the brightness, but if you actually pair that with the remote that comes with it, it actually allows you to control everything wirelessly. The nice thing is that if you did have multiple of these things, you could set them up on multiple channels and be able to control them individually or as groups. Now, the other nice thing about this light is, as I mentioned before, with it being an LED, that means it is very cool to the touch. This light does not get hot, and if it does start to heat up a little bit, there is a fan built in, but this fan is so quiet, I've actually never heard it. Now, I know for a lot of people that when it comes to light, that it has to be you know, very powerful. They want that light to be very bright, and I can say without a shadow of a doubt that this light is extremely powerful, especially for indoor shooting. Now they do have a bigger version of this, the 300D, which is a brighter light. It has a little bit more power, um, but if you're shooting primarily indoors, I think the 120D will be more than okay. The 300D I find really coming more handy if you're shooting a lot of really, really dark nighttime stuff, or if you're trying to battle the sun, if you're trying to light an exterior shot. Now, the one reason why I personally think that this light is so great is because not only can you use it for videography or for filmmaking, but it also makes for just like a really soft light for photos. I found that when shooting things like product photography or even portraits with this light, that it's such a soft light being used with the light dome that it's not just great for video, but it can make for some really cool stills as well. Now recently I was at NAB and Aperture actually announced their brand new 120D Mark II, which is gonna be coming out very soon. But if it's anything like this light, I am going to be extremely excited to get my hands on it and test it as well. Now with that also being said, the 120D Mark II is gonna be a little bit brighter. It does have a couple extra elements to it. However, that means this light here is gonna be coming in at a slightly cheaper price than the Mark II. I personally think that this light is so great that if you are someone who's trying to save a couple hundred bucks and you wanna go ahead and get this light, it is a perfect time to pick up this light. 
is the difference gonna be worth it? Well, I'm not gonna truly know until I get the two side by side. However, I can say that this light is so great that if anyone's looking to get one, I would say don't bother waiting. You can pick this one up now if you're in a dire need for a light. One last little thing is that these lights, not only can they run off of wall power, but they also can be battery powered. The version that I got actually works with V-mount batteries, but I am told that there is a version that you can get, I believe off their website, that is compatible with gold mount batteries. Uh, personally, the only thing that I've ever seen on these lights is just make sure you get a battery that is powerful enough to control these lights. Yes, these lights are very soft, and yes, it is a very bright light, but that also means you need the right size battery. I have heard from other people that without the right battery that the light will just turn itself off and that primarily has to do with not getting enough juice from the battery. So make sure if you do decide to go battery mounted for these guys, get yourself a really strong V mount battery, something that is designed to work with this guy. So just do a little bit of research there. Personally, right now, I'm just running it completely off the wall, but eventually I do have plans on investing in some V mount batteries so I can run this thing wirelessly. You know, as I said in my last YouTube setup video, you know, right now the current setup I actually have, I have my light right here, I have a bounce board right here, and I'm getting all of my lighting directly from these two. Now granted, yes, now I do have a little bit of a kicker light just kind of filling in the top of my hat here, but for the most part, all of my lighting is coming directly from this one source. Just to give you guys a quick little example of how much light is actually coming from just this one light, I'm actually gonna go ahead and power this thing off now. And so you can see, as of right now, all I have is this little kicker light just filling in the back. But if I go ahead and press this power button and turn it back on, you'll see how much light is coming from just this one source and how soft it is. So here's an example of a before and after using the light dome. So this right now is a setup using the light dome. You can see that it's very soft. There's no real hard shadows on my face from the light coming in on this side. So really watch right here and you're gonna see what the difference between soft light and hard light is. So this is soft, and this is hard light. Again, I have not adjusted the light whatsoever. I haven't turned down the intensity or anything, but now you can actually see there's a lot harder shadows being casted on this side of my face. Now, typically this is considered to be not as flattering, especially for interview style shooting, but I wanted to show you guys just a quick difference between using the soft box and not. So now let's go back over to that soft light. So that's the ins and outs of this light. If you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also, check out these other videos that I recently put out on other gear that I use to make this YouTube video. And on top of that, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and the bell so that way you guys can be notified whenever I release a brand new video. But until the next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.